All right, time now is 12.37 afternoon on November 11th. Um, um, I was also kind of worried, like, oh, what if I have to do something today? But apparently I don't, other than a John L. Zoom meeting. So this is what I'm going to do today. I don't want to leave my apartment today. I don't want to leave at all. I don't want to do that. I want to focus on things. Because yesterday, I guess I was just too tired, but I just moped around at the end of the day. And I didn't do much. I yeah, I didn't write my PIQs at all. I really need to start. I mean, I, I didn't write my PIQ 6 or PIQ 7, I think. Um, yeah, so I really need to start writing that. Um, and I didn't watch the anime I planned to watch like three freaking days ago. So I really need to start cranking up my productivity today. Um... And I also got albums to review, and I haven't even listened to them enough at all. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. As for the Duolingo test, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I just don't want to pay for it again. Um, but um, if my appeal got rejected, then I'll have to do it again. And I think I still got a little bit of time to do it. I filmed a couple of album reviews, and then I just went to John L's Zoom meeting for the casting. I Move the laptop and my Blue Yeti microphone outside on the table. Um, because, yeah, I sound great, but the Wi-Fi sucks. So, I need to go out there. But yeah, it's been pretty productive so far. I watched three episodes of anime. I filmed a couple of album reviews. And now I'm, I'm going to have to start to do the work, you know. Such as uh, college stuff, as well as a uh, uni app, and as well as my short film. I may send my short film over to Cliff so that he can help me color it. And I, I don't have a lot of experience. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't get invited to birthday dinners all that often. But I originally thought, silly me, I, I thought that when I get invited to birthday dinners, um, JT's going to bring us to a fancy restaurant and we'll all pay ourselves. We're just going to hang out. But apparently um, that isn't the only way to hang out in in a food dinner situation. And since JT is inviting a lot of us to her place to eat dinner, we're not going to pay any of that. And because of that, there is a natural obligation that I have to return, to give something in return. Thus, the concept of a birthday gift. Now, I'm not going to go out of my apartment today at all, but maybe I will tomorrow. So I, after working for the film festival tomorrow, I will... um go to Ralph's, and then maybe I'll go to Target to look for a simple gift for JT. All right, time now is um, 10, uh, 9.42 p.m. on, um, you know, November 11th. Um, yeah, uh, let's wrap it up today. So nothing important happened today. Nothing all that important happened today anyways. I, I'm grateful that I exist. So back in secondary school, I, I'm always very curious if people talk about me behind my back, whether it's, you know, something good or something bad or just me, like mentioning my name, because I don't exist. Back in secondary school, I barely existed. I didn't do much. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't go out much. And I'm not important. I was so unimportant. I was basically a background character, an extra, and I had little to no importance at all. Even someone like Natalie would walk up to me and say to my face, like, you're not important. You're, like, not a main character. Yesterday, Pepper told me that Pepper told JT that I showed Pepper my gigantic Google spreadsheet. Uh, and Pepper said, wow, I've never met a friend so organized and so like tidy and meticulous. And JT was like, oh yeah, I think Enoch showed me too. Which is weird. I, I don't recall showing JT any of this. I recall showing Potter this, but I don't recall showing JT any of this. Maybe I have and I forgot. It wouldn't surprise me anyways. And Pepper's like, yeah. People are talking about me behind my back. And, and it's like good, you know, it's, it's, it builds character. Like I just called my dad for the first time, um, in ever, 
I think. I mean, I've had phone calls with my with my dad once back in the quarantine hotel when my dad asked me about the drink because Pink tried to give me a milk tea in hotel. Remember that? But I didn't call him. He called me. So I called my dad today, just now for eight minutes, eight and a half minutes, and it's. It's fine, you know. He seems legit happy that I called him, and it's a little bit different because my mom knows a lot more about my life here than my dad's. Like my dad is still asking me, like, "Oh, how's the money situation? Like, how's the food? Like, are you getting enough sleep?" And I said, "Oh, I've been busy." And my dad's like, "Oh, what kind of busy? Like homework?" And I'm like, "Yeah, homework. You know, school." Actually, it's a lot more complicated than that, but you know, I I couldn't elaborate. And then my dad asked me if I've made any friends, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, a few. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. All right, well, gotta go. All right, so time now is um nine thirty seven a.m. on November twelfth. I'm so tired, and I have decided that maybe tomorrow I won't go to church because I I I have just slept for less than six hours. If I also sleep for less than six hours tomorrow, I'm gonna be really tired, especially given the fact that on Monday I will have to sleep for less than six hours again. So I'd rather have a full night's sleep tomorrow, which means that I can push one of my album reviews to tomorrow. I don't have to review it today. Um. Yeah, that's basically it. Um. Also, another thing is okay. So today, what's gonna happen? Um, today is a Saturday, and normally I do nothing on Saturday. But uh, of course, something happens today. Uh, very soon, in about an hour, I'm going to have to go out and go to the Asian World Film Festival. Uh, volunteering for that day one, Cliff would show up probably. Um, so there's that. And then um. After a while, at around four p.m., I'm gonna have to go to Ralph's, and I'm gonna have to go to Target to buy、um, JT a birthday gift. I have no idea what to buy, but、um, I'm gonna have to figure something out very soon. I'm excited for tomorrow's birthday party, birthday dinner stuff. It's twelve o nine. I'm late by like a whole fucking hour. Film festival for the world premiere.、Uh, if you could just take us back, because I believe it was your own mother who inspired this story. Yeah, she, you know, just spent time with each other with technology, and then she would go on about something. <laughs> I'm at Target. What should I get for JT? 
send help. Where should I get? All right, I got it. I got a gift for JT. It's a it's a cup. It's a mug. It's like five dollars. <laughs> it, it's the best gift I could think of. I can't buy food, you know. It's it's silly, and I don't want to buy anything stupid like moisturizing cream. She probably has a lot of. All right, time now is 8.27. This is what I got from Ralph's. This is $82. I've never bought something so expensive collectively in Ralph's before in my whole life. Okay, Lay's chips, salad kit. Here's uh, sliced mushrooms. And then uh, even though I don't really want to eat this, I know I'll hate it, but um, I need breakfast. Peach croissants. Next up, we got beef bits. We got pork loin chops. I can't find pork uh, pork ribs. I can't find it. I don't know why. Ravioli, Butterfinger, Amy's Kitchen, uh, some Indian dish, and then chicken breast. Over here, we got uh, Star of the Show, um, the toilet paper. Oh, salad dressing. I got curious. I really got curious. I really want to try what this soup tastes like. And a safer choice, cream of mushroom soup. Hopefully this doesn't taste terrible. 82 bucks. Why does my hair look so unstable? All right. Well, um, time now is 1040. Um, let's wrap it up today. Uh... Yeah, quite a bit has happened today, I guess. So I totally did not expect um, Los Angeles traffic to suck this hard. And then right off the bat, I entered the cinema and there we go. That's the immediate boss um, and a couple of people I've seen before. And uh, he, he's like, oh, you're, um, what's your name again? You're Enoch, right? And I'm like, yeah. No, at first he's like, you're, you're a volunteer? And I'm like, yeah. He just didn't recognize me. And then he's like, uh, you're Enoch, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, uh, get the badge. So I left the cinema, went to the little reception center, got my badge, went back, and then uh, I, I saw Cliff and Justin. They're here. And then I just helped out with a little bit of, like, uh, there were these voting ballots where people can vote uh, the rating for a film. And um, <coughs> I had to flick through stacks of voting ballots to make sure there are no blank ballots uh, on it. Oh, where are you from? And I said, Hong Kong. And he's like, oh. And he's like, you know, he, he, he thought it's E-N-I-N-O. So he said, it's I-N-O, right? And I'm like, no, it's E-N-O-C-H. And he's like, oh, Enoch. Enoch? Enoch? And I'm like, e Enoch. You know, and he's like, oh, okay. And then I... He took some photos of me to test out his lens, his Nikon lens, and then I went to, um, oh, that's Pepper, and then I went to the cinemas to watch uh, this Singaporean film called Ajuma um, with Cliff and Justin, but I couldn't find them, so I just sat down and watched the whole freaking thing. I was, I missed the first 10 minutes or so, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not bad. It's not a bad film at all. And then afterwards, uh, there's a director's Q&A session. The director's here, and it appears a lot of people enjoyed it. And then I had a giant bucket, like an empty popcorn bucket, to hold people, to uh, ask people for ballots. And then that's pretty much it. And then afterwards, I wanted to watch more films. Another film is showing called Life uh, from Kazakhstan. And I'm like, man, I've never watched a Kazakhstan film before. I need to watch it. So I... I went to the theater at the side, at theater number four. I was at three, now I went to four. And the whole theater, there were nobody other than one dude sitting at the back. I could have chosen three sides. I didn't know what three sides fucking meant, okay? I thought three sides meant, you know, a, a carb and two dishes. One plus two is three. But apparently it means one carb plus three dishes because three dishes means three sides. I don't know what does that mean. So I got myself a uh, chow mein fried noodles, which is bland and oily as hell. Uh, and then string beans and chicken breasts, which is kind of me mediocre. And then Angus beef with mushrooms, which is fine. 
And then I had that with a can of Sprite at the little VIP reception lounge place. So, um, the immediate boss, who I think hates me, or finds me annoying maybe, I don't know, walks up to me and asks me, you know Thomas, right? And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, Thomas, duh. And he said Thomas is supposed to come at 6 p.m. Um, so I texted Thomas like, hey, are you coming to the film festival? And Thomas was like, no, full stop. And I'm like, what happened? Why? And he said, well, I, I told Thomas my boss is asking for you. And Thomas said, tell your boss to not treat me as poorly as, as he did and not speak to me in such a condescending way. And I'm like, what? What happened? I mean, I said, yeah, I get it. He can be cold-blooded sometimes. I mean, other people are nice, though. And Thomas was like, yeah, other people are nice. But the boss is just so mean. Like, I asked him what to do, and he just responded in such a such a, an arrogant way. And I hate him, and I don't want to work on this film festival ever again. <laughs> wow. Um, this is funny as hell. I left. I took the bus. Again, I was so unlucky because a bus just passed by me. So I stood at the bus stop for about 10 minutes waiting for the next bus. Um, and then I took a bus number three. I took a bus number one and I went to Target just to buy JTA present. I found it kind of cheap. And then I walked 15 minutes to Ralph's and bought tons of stuff. Came back. Here I am. Cook dinner, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's interesting because seeing her younger look gives me more of an understanding of um, what kind of person she was, which is something I'm very curious. If Pepper is a character in conspiracies in my secondary school life, what kind of person is she? Because right now, all I know is Pepper is from this universe and not from back when. Time now is 11.39 a.m. on November 13th. Um, yeah, and it's JT's birthday. So shout out to JT. So today, um, I'm happy I'm able to sleep a lot. But really, I have a lot to do. I have a couple reviews to do. Um, I'm going to go to the Asian World Film Festival again um to help out a little bit hopefully pepper's there because i know pepper has a shift today and then um and then uh, at around maybe six o'clock or maybe five thirty, i'm going to bounce i'm gonna leave and i'm gonna go to um uh jt's place for uh her birthday dinner and um I've bought her a birthday gift as well yesterday, so that's good. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I, I really ran out of time last night. I mean, I eventually did do a little anthropology homework, but by little, I mean very, very, very little uh, to the point where it's basically nothing. Um, I did work on my PIQ a little bit more, but I didn't do it last night. I did it on the bus. All right, it's lunch. It's like 2.14 right now. This is... um. Aberlo noodles with three fish balls for the first time, gong yun, or meatballs, four of these, and some lettuce. I just snapped them and threw them in the pot over here, cooked the noodles here with the soup, water from here, because I don't want to use this water. All right, let's try it out. This is my lunch. It's good. It's good. It's good for what it is. And then this the the meatballs. Let's try it. <laughs> God, the bus system here sucks ass.
gerçekten değil. Baksana. Hesap alayım ben. Bu da senin paran geçmez. <gülüyor> I'm gonna take a quick look. All right, I left, I worked at the Asian World Film Festival for like 20 minutes and then I just, um, I just bounced. I checked out the Criterion stand in the Barnes and Noble a little bit, really small, pretty good though. Heading to JT's now. All right, I've arrived at a bus stop and right now um, all I need to do is uh, walk for 20 minutes up a mountain and then I'll reach JT's place. Let's go. Where the hell am I? Hmm. Ooh, oh my god. All right, folk. This is it. Whoa. Here I am. <sighs> Damn. Baby. Okay, there. Okay. Nikki, are you gonna vlog? <laughs> I'm gonna vlog. <laughs> Time now is 12.05 afternoon on November 14th. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about what happened. Wow. Um, shit. So, as you can probably tell, I didn't do one of these videos last night because I couldn't. Um, because um, I spent the entire last night at JT's place. And it's very, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but it's, it's a very interesting thing that happened. You know, it's very interesting and it's uh, definitely one of the most interesting thing that had happened to me all year. You know, it's a very memorable night. I told my immediate boss like, oh, I actually had to leave like half an hour later. And he's like, well, uh, you really have nothing to do here. Um, but yeah, um, I met, I saw the Japanese American dude, Robert, and he was like, oh, I'm going to watch One Piece later after I, my shift in this film festival is over. And uh, <coughs> I jokingly said, the One Piece, and then the immediate, the immediate boss heard me, and he was like, the One Piece. <laughs> so, oh, I, I, I didn't know the boss was chill like that, you know. Um, so there's that. But I immediately left. At around 5.30, I left. I walked to the bus stop. I took one bus. I took a different bus. And I walked up the mountains to CJT. 
And while I was walking up the mountains, A, it was cold, B, it was pitch black, C, I was listening to music and I was bopping and dancing around because nobody's around. So I, I literally had the whole town to my own, you know, so I just lip synced to music. I danced a little bit. It's really fun. I listened to like a platinum disco um, and I was like, Pura tina no ni pa pa. you know, it, it was just so much fun. Um, but yeah, I arrived at JT's place right on time um, at 7 p.m. And uh, JT hasn't arrived yet. And then uh, I was just going to text JT or whatever. Uh, but Potter saw me outside the door and Potter just opened the door and let me in. And at first it was a little awkward because I haven't seen Potter in, I'd say, five months, which is not that much. But you know, still, still a little time, you know. And uh, <coughs> he hasn't had a haircut, so now his hair is like right here. He looks like Steely Dan from JoJo. And uh, he's like, oh, come on, come in. And I, I put down my bag and I drank some water and... We chatted a little bit and he's like, oh, so how's life? You know, how is your work? Uh, and I said, oh, I got fired from the well. And then I explained all my stuff to him and I asked him, how's, how's life? And he's like, yeah, you know, pretty good. You know, uh, met a lot of people, got a lot of work now, blah, blah. I'm, I've been working at the art gallery for my college and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay. And then not for long, about five minutes later, they have returned. So it's JT, Pepper, uh, the Thai boy and just another Thai woman. Yeah, we all got along. I'm like, hi, hey, and we chatted a lot. It's really nice. And apparently it's just us. So, you know, it's not like a huge party or something like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, um, this is where the interesting begins, right? I mean, we, it wasn't much of a dinner. It was just like, they laid all the food on the table. It's like grapes and cheese and biscuits, like snacks and um, like chips um, and like little um, boiled egg with like some sort of mix on top, some sort of pickle mix on top. I don't even know. And then afterwards, uh, I, I also met the host and it was really nice. The house is really big. It's really nice and bright and it's almost the complete opposite of my first host which is basically like a like a haunted house. It's crooked, disgusting, stinky. Uh, but this one is amazing and the host is actually really nice. I saw the host's son as well, which is like 30 something years old guy with a uh, little chubby, has facial hair. And he spent a lot of time chatting with Potter. I'm so glad I bought something because I would look like an idiot if I hadn't bought anything. Because pretty much everyone had bought something. I think everyone had bought something. The host gave, JT like three gifts and one of them was a cup like a tea cup like a cup but you can also like there's like a compartment where you can put a tea bag in there and I'm like well fuck I also bought a cup and it's not as good um uh, but I, I bought something at least you know and turns out Pepper also bought something last night when I spoke to Pepper about this or yesterday morning when I spoke to Pepper about this Pepper was like oh I don't know I don't have the time to buy her anything maybe I'll buy it to her like in the future but nope Earlier yesterday, Pepper, JT, the Thai boy, and the other girl actually hung out and had a picnic together uh, near the Hollywood sign at the park. And they were all having fun and they were all taking selfies and stuff. Um, and then uh, they went to like Westfield, Culver City or Century City or something like that. And Pepper just bought JT some makeup brushes. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And afterwards, um, we had karaoke session where we sing. Um, at first, it's Thai session. Like, it's all, like, Thai songs and English songs. Like, for a while, it's Taylor Swift. Pepper really likes Taylor Swift. And Pepper, the Thai girl, and JT were all, like, singing Taylor Swift very passionately. Uh, the Thai boy, I asked the Thai boy, you know, like, what's, uh, are there any swear words? Oh, it's actually not Thai boy. He's actually older than me. I should have said Thai man. Because he's actually older than me. He's 20 and he's his birthday is February. So he's actually uh, like seven months older than me. Um, but I also call him Thai boy because it rolls off the tongue better. And it's just me, JT, Pepper, and, and Potter. So at that point, we're, we all gather together in a little corner of the house, looking at an iPad, <coughs> singing songs. And I receive huge social pressure at that point. Because at that point, they were like, okay, all the Thai people are gone. Let's sing Cantonese songs. And 
I know fuck all about canto pop music, okay? Like, even though I review a lot of Cantonese music, at the end of the day, I don't know barely enough. And especially mainstream music, I'm just like, I don't like, I don't enjoy mainstream music. So they started playing, like, MC, um, like, Michael, Michael John, MC, um, whose music I just dislike. I think he's very boring. And they played a lot of Hins Jung, which is also, like, I'm not a huge fan. They played a lot of Karen Slam, a lot of, um, <clears throat> um, older stuff, like, um, like, um, not see all star, but they played something similar. Like they were just playing so much music and they all sounded the same. And I was so awkward because they all looked at me and do you want to sing something? And I'm like, I, I can't, I don't know any of this. And I feel so awkward. I feel so like excluded and out of place and it's bad. So, but I don't want to be, you know, just standing in the corner, you know, given that I am the new me, I am the new Enoch. I tried to join in. I couldn't sing at all. Like I, I couldn't sing well. And I couldn't sing the lyrics because I don't even know the fucking song. I don't even listen to this music. But I tried. I actually like joined in. I looked at the lyrics and I just sung along. I, I tried to sing along. I was guessing. I was estimating the melodies. Uh, <clears throat> which turns out to be quite fun, you know. And it's good because I feel like as a Hong Konger, I want to know more of this kind of pop music. Even though right now, I still don't enjoy it all that much. But I feel like I should know more of them at least. But yeah, this is where the interesting actually begins. At around 11.30, it was very late already, and I wanted to stay around a little more. And JT's like, you know what, let's move the karaoke thing to my bedroom. And uh, we can continue singing there, so that's what we did. We moved the karaoke thing there. I lent JT my um, portable charger to charge the speaker. Um, and then we continued singing for a little while. Um... It was a very chill room with a carpet, nice and spacey. It actually feels like a bedroom, unlike this one, which feels like a nuclear holocaust. Um, but yeah, at some point, we just stopped singing. At some point, we're just like, okay, it's really late now. We're really tired. Like, people started to get disinterested in singing. JT started to be uh, stopped the last one. Um, and we just sat and chatted for the next six hours. Which is so interesting. I love deep talking. Deep talking might be one of my favorite things to do with people. Because you really get to know the person. And um, you get to have very interesting conversations. And interesting conversations can be so goddamn riveting. Um, but yeah. Uh, Potter is already kind of a philosophical kind of guy. So he already always randomly asks questions that are like kind of, kind of philosophical. Um, like... Pepper talked about her weird heart condition, arrhythmia, and Potter asked Pepper, like, how do you feel when you had one of these episodes, like, um, when your heart rate got up to, like, 200? What was the feeling like? Like, did your worldview change? Did it shape your personality? And Pepper's like, uh, I don't know, like, it's, it's not a big deal to me. And at some point, Potter asked me, like, do you, do you feel bad feeling, like, excluded like, because you don't know a lot of Canto Pop songs. And they were even throwing, like, Hong Kong, like, TVB references around. And I don't fucking watch TVB. Like, it's such a bad TV channel. Their, their TV shows are shit. Like, maybe they weren't. So, Pepper and JT started talking. Oh, yeah, that TVB show, that theme song, oh, that actor. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that episode, oh, yeah. And, and I'm just like, fuck. I don't know shit. I call myself the culture detective and I don't even know my own culture. Fuck, you know. So I, at that point, I was feeling a little insulted because, and I'm more insulted than like an, an, another Hong Konger would probably feel because I always pride myself as being a Hong Konger. And then this is where it starts to get into sensitive territory. And I don't really want to talk about love, honestly. Like I can talk about it in front of Potter because he's a dude and he's also a thinker, but I don't want to do it in front of Pepper and JT. But then I also low-key want to know what's going on. So we started to dive into this weird conversation about love. And I mostly stayed silent. But um, Potter was like, yeah, I just, I don't know what love is anymore. I just feel like I'm waiting. And I don't know what I'm waiting for. Like, it's just, especially Potter. Potter told me that he's at a bottleneck area where um, 
at, at, at this age where he has to find someone to love, but he just can't. And so Potter's just questioning this. And then Potter started to ask people like, do you want kids? And Pepper's like, oh yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't want kids. And JT's like, oh, I don't want kids either because I don't like kids. And Potter's like, yeah, uh, me too. I feel like I would be a terrible father. And I didn't say much because I don't think about this stuff. And I don't want to think about this stuff because it's too far ahead. But um, it's a little chilling to see, oh my god, people actually don't want to have kids. And this is how human extinction is going to happen. But anyways, then here comes the most interesting bit. I, I started to, I, I, I went off, you know, I, I didn't have any filter on. And I started showing my real side. Like I started saying, talking about um, change, how people change and how like um, every, every time I change, a part of me dies and we all keep dying. And Potter's like, oh yeah, you know, I really agree with that. Um, but I talked about um, how secondary, I want to know how people are in secondary school what kind of people they are, because I can't really gauge who people are in this day and age. Um, and Potter was like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. You know what, let's do a sharing. So for about three hours straight, me, I, I sat here, JT, Pepper and the opposite of me, and then Potter. Us four, we just sat on the floor and we just started doing this weird ice breaking exercise where we had to talk about one person, we talk about our first impression of them, and, who, and they need to talk about who they really are and who they were back in secondary school. Um, so it started with Potter. And um, it was pretty on point, actually. Like, all four of us, when we were, like, throwing stuff around, it was really on point. Like, none of us had incongruent descriptions from different people. Like, all of us had the same, oh, Potter. So Pepper always thought Potter... Pepper stalked Potter. Pepper stalked Potter on Instagram. I always thought Potter is really interesting, like the way he thinks. And um, he's also kind of like edgy, emo. Um, but yeah, Pepper thinks Potter is interesting in a, in a funny, not funny, but in a, in a vibrant way, you know. And then JT is like, oh yeah. Yeah, at first, I also thought Potter is kind of like emo, and I kind of, I was kind of scared to see him. Um, I thought it's going to be awkward, but it turned out fine. And now, I realize Potter is very disorganized, and how Potter would randomly, like he would smoke weed and smoke cigarettes, and Potter is always like, he can't control himself, so he's like, ah oh, fuck, I need to smoke another one, and he comes back and he's like, ah oh, fuck, I need to smoke another one, and he comes back. And Potter's like, wow, like all three of you um, described me very well. Like he pulled his group of boys, like, you know, they're like the core of evil in the school. And he's like a thinker, the planner. And then he starts to get worse and worse in, in terms of everything. Like, like um, health and, and um, um, academic performances and whatever. It starts to get worse and worse. And he went to university and he just starts smoking weed and drinking and smoking cigarettes and then the next person to talk about is me which is kind of scary at that point I was shaking a little bit maybe it's because I was cold maybe it's because I was nervous I don't know um but it's interesting to see what people he understand about me and and the fact that people think about me is already kind of like an honor so it started with Potter Potter's like oh um you know when we first met I we did FaceTime together and I thought you were like, you look so serious. And I was like, damn, like you probably think I'm fucking stupid. And then we met the first time and it feels like we couldn't talk so well. It's like there's a barrier between us, but then we had KFC together and we started chatting and it turns out we can chat and Potter finds me interesting. And I'm like, Oh, thank you. Potter finds me interesting and in how, I'm so obsessed with filmmaking and how I'm so dead set on, on, on filmmaking and as a career and as a dream. And Potter's also really impressed how organized I am because he's very disorganized. Like 
Potter's like, oh my god, like I don't know that there's someone out there in the world who's this organized. And then it's Pepper's turn. And this is the most, this is the one I look forward to the most, honestly. So Pepper's like, I mean, uh, he met me at first in film 31 class. And uh, at first, um, when I talked to him, it was also like, oh man, it's like there's a barrier between us. It's like we couldn't chat very well. Um, um, and then Pepper didn't actually say much of, of substance. And then he's like, she's like, oh, but well, we can talk a lot now, you know. And uh, she said, I'm very organized. She said she doesn't know any other person who like uses Excel and everything. And Pepper's like, um, you know, you, you think a lot, you overthink a lot. Like a thought for me is like a second. A thought for him is like very long, like hours or maybe even days. And <clears throat> Pepper's like, um, yeah, Pepper also called me interesting, which is amazing. Damn, goddamn. Um, but yeah, Pepper didn't say much, honestly. Pepper didn't think much of me, but not in a terrible way, you know. Uh, Pepper, oh yeah, Pepper said I'm innocent. And Pepper doesn't really know how to explain it. <clears throat> not in a way I, I'm like not dirty. I mean, I'm also very not dirty, honestly. But also not not complicated, so I am complicated. But I'm innocent in the way where I always show my feelings through my facial expressions and I don't hide them a lot. And I said, well, oh, that's partially because I trust you, you know. Um, and then JT's description of me is the most concerning because the first time JT met me, JT was like, wow, okay, you're kind of silly, goofy. So JT met me um, back in Hong Kong in late December and then met me again in early January, you know, I vlogged everything. And JT was like, wow, um, I didn't like the guy first. Like JT didn't, didn't like me. JT's just like, first of all, I couldn't talk with me a lot. And when I got onto the bus and I didn't know about the tap card and, and the transit app and everything, like JT thought, wow, I'm very dependent. And then I mentioned my mom a lot. So JT thought I'm a mob, which is like a mama's boy. So I'm very, in, very, very dependent. And that's funny because I always thought JT is very independent. So to a degree, that's also kind of true. Um, that's pretty much it. And then Pepper just met JT and Pepper's like, wow, like didn't expect us to be able to, you know, chat so well, you know, and um, Nam can like match so well. Like, oh man, I don't even fucking know how to explain in English. <laughs> And then JT explained, oh yeah, you know, actually I can relate to Enoch a little bit because back in secondary school, there were like two main groups of friends and I was sort of in between those two groups and neither of these groups really accept me. So I'm always like very, I feel like an outsider. I'm very excluded. So a lot of the stuff that we talked about really throws back to, oh, what happened in January when I and JT met? What happened in February when I and JT and Potter first hung out? What happened in spring break when I and JT and not enough pepper and Potter went to the Grove and Melrose. What happened in um, February when I and Pepper first met? What happened in um, friggin I don't know last last week when JT Pepper and Potter went to this party without me because I'm stupid, of course. Just kidding. But yeah, back to Pepper. So the way I explained to Pepper, so Pepper's pretty. I'm really conflicted and torn on Pepper. Because you know how I talk about her a lot and how um, I feel like when when it comes to Pepper, it always ends up being a discussion on me and how I view people. But here's the entire timeline. Like I basically laid out my entire timeline with Pepper and how okay, we first met and then I really wanted to be her friend. And then we couldn't be friends. And uh, the part where Pepper randomly went to Riverdale because she's sad. And she went alone. And Pepper even explained, oh yeah, I went to, uh, not Riverdale, uh, Riverside. Pepper's like, oh yeah, uh, in April, spring break, I just went to Riverside by myself. I got a train ticket and I went to this gay bar, this 18 plus gay bar. And everyone's really nice. And um, Pepper had a meal there. And then there were singing spots. So Pepper's like, oh, I want to sing. So Pepper went up to the stage and sung Taylor Swift's All Too Well 10 minute version. 
Pepper's so fucking ballsy. Like, I want to do that kind of shit too. You know, just running, going to random towns, eating random food, randomly singing and meeting people and exchanging IGs with people. Like, Pepper's so fucking brave. And then a couple like walked up to Pepper and was like, oh, are you alone? And Pepper's like, yeah. And the, ran, the, the couple was like, oh, you can come to our place later. It's like upstairs. And Pepper's like, sure. And Pepper actually followed them, which is crazy. Like, JT even was like, man, I wouldn't do that. And then Pepper explained how back in secondary school um, in the last year in Form 6, there's this uh, student union thing. And she was actually kind of introverted, kind of a side girl back in secondary school. So it was really weird when she was chosen to be vice president for the student union. And um, all her friends are also in the opposing student union. So after Pepper student union got elected, there was this tension and like all her friends, they were taking selfies together and um, excluding Pepper and Pepper felt very um, like excluded and like an outsider. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, there's a lot to um, think about and digest after last night's conversation. And it was really late, like at around 2 a.m. I was already like, man, maybe we should go home. But I didn't say it out loud because I don't want to, because this is going so well, you know. And so we talk and talk and talk. And at some point I just gave up. You know what? I can like maybe not sleep for one night because this conversation is going so well that I'll sacrifice sleep just because of this. So we chatted until like 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Last night was really, oh, also apparently Potter knows about my YouTube channel, but it's not because I accidentally showed it to him in June. It's because um, he was looking up My Little Airport and he saw my review of the latest My Little Airport album, which is similar to, to the reason why Pepper found me as well. And I'm like, fuck, shh, shh, nobody needs to know, nobody needs to know. Also, um, Apparently Pepper, after the Halloween party, Pepper, Potter, and JT met again in like this beach party and they took weed together. Like Pepper tried weed for the first time there and Potter even joked like, oh wow, Enoch, you're the only person who hasn't tried weed. And like all three of them were pretty stoned. And I'm the kind of guy who really wants to try out new stuff, but then there are boundaries. So I don't really know, honestly. I don't want to give him to social pressure I don't want to give into peer pressure, but then I also want to try. But then both Potter and Pepper also said, like, I really want to know how will Enoch act under weed. Because without drugs, Enoch already seems kind of crazy. Pew pew day, like little, not whimsical, but a little uh, windy, like crazy, a little, little random. All right, let's talk about today. So yeah, um, earlier this morning at around 10.15, the fucking uh, fi uh, smoke alarm, smoke detector alarm was beeping and it's just really annoying and I went out and I tried to fix it and then um, I slept until 11.30 and now I I've just spent a whole hour just talking. Great. I'm going to have a bit of breakfast. I'm not even going to do like reviews or anything. I'm going to have breakfast, have lunch, study. That's it. I'm going out. And then tonight at 8.30, there's a Zoom meeting. There's an HKOS um, short film festival Zoom meeting between me, Pepper, the founder of HKOS, and another woman. This is the stories for the ages, you know. I and three other people chatted in a bedroom. You know, this is the kind of shit. Like back in secondary school, Natalie would be like, oh yeah, last week I and this person and that person, like, we hung out until like 6 a.m. in the morning, blah, blah, blah. Like that never really happened. But, you know, for instance, and I would be like, damn, I really wish I was there. But well, guess what? I, I was there last night. So, yeah. Um, I think I think even Pepper was like, oh, yeah, I think Pepper said it. Pepper was like, oh, even when I first met you and now, like you seem a little different now, which is cr fucking crazy because... You know, I go back to Hong Kong and ask Natalie, like, oh, do you think I've changed? And Natalie's like, oh, I don't know. Or, oh, I don't notice any change. Or I think back in 2020, I asked Natalie, oh, do you think I've changed between, like, 2017 and 2020? And Natalie's like, not, not much. Which is kind of insulting because change is, like, my thing. I want to change. I want to keep changing. I want to surprise people. But Pepper said from the time she knew me in February versus now, which is about um, nine months, I've changed which is crazy. 
All right, time now is 6.52. Um, let's wrap it up. Not really wrap it up. I'll talk more later. But uh, yeah, I just went to biology class. I was like half an hour. I was 25 minutes early because I... Yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like after last night, like my relationship with the other three have grown way closer, especially with Pepper. Especially given that, I mean, yeah, Pepper and JT and Potter hang out now, but at the end of the day, I know Pepper more so than JT and Potter does. And then, like, vice versa. Like, I also know JT and Potter way earlier. Like, I'm the first character JT knows. And um, I am also the first character that um, Pepper knows. And actually, I'm also the first person Potter knew. Like, holy shit. I'm actually a quite the important, actually, which is something that I should be proud of myself for. Like back in secondary school, if somebody starts, you know, like talking about something like volleyball and I don't know anything about it, I'm just going to stand aside and give up. But nowadays, I just try to join in and try to, you know, have fun with that, you know, and I think that's respectable both ways. Like this way, I'm respecting their conversation and their game and that way they will respect me for at least trying, you know, I just, I don't know, it's really the best way I can describe Pepper is I don't know, because Pepper is a, uh, pretty much the opposite kind of person that I would want to be with, but, um, I don't know, I feel like, uh, I, I still question myself from time to time, am I being too weird last night? Have I talked too much about myself? Because now I feel like an absolute freaking psycho. All right, time now is um 9.03. Um, let's wrap it up today. So, um, shoosh, I was gonna, oh, I was gonna add one more thing, but I forgot. But anyways, just had dinner, beef bits, wawa choy, rice. Oh yeah, right, uh, the host, so JT's host son is a very interesting person. Um, like his life is very like crazy. Uh, so I think I've mentioned this before, but his wife cheated on him and was about to have threesome with two other guys on his bed. And that really broke him. He and a black friend were driving a car and then a racist cop showed up and shot and killed the black man in front of him. And he was in a state of shock after that. And he also collects guns in the house and the cops came in one day and found him so he may go to jail. But the most interesting thing was, um, or, or one of the most recent thing was, uh, I think last week he and Potter went out to the bar and drink and then went to a club and uh, the host son was kind of drunk and he started calling people the N-word and he started um, pointing at girls saying, I'm going to fuck her, I'm going to fuck her, I'm going to fuck her. That All right, um, time now is uh, 9.36, quick update here. So, um... Potter just DM'd me on Instagram uh, telling me that uh, he got COVID. And uh, we even sat right next to each other and talked for six hours yesterday. So, uh, well, I guess my time is due. I have avoided, like, throughout the entire pandemic for nearly three years, I did not get COVID once. Um, maybe this is it. Maybe, maybe I'm going to finally get COVID. Honestly, it's not a huge deal. It's probably going to blow over really fast. It's just that I, if I never get COVID ever, it's it's like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of a thing you can brag to your friends about, you know. I will test myself on Thursday. And if it's negative on that day, I'll test on Friday. And if it's negative, I'll test on Saturday and then on Sunday. And if it's still negative on Sunday, then okay, I'm good. I'll, I, I won't test anymore. If it's not, if it's positive one day, then I'll stop testing. And then, um, I don't know, I'll wait four to five days. Um, I guess another thing I'd like to talk about is weed. So yesterday, last night, again, Pepper, JT, and Potter mentioned that they have tried weed. Um, and they even was like, oh, you should try. But Pepper even said, like, yeah, Enoch doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would try. Um, and that's true. And I 
I've already set boundaries, you know, I'm, I like adventuring and I do admit that I like stepping out of comfort zone and trying my best to do that, especially lately, a lot lately. But there are still boundaries that I always keep myself, like I always withhold myself from. Um, like doing drugs, I'll never do that in my life, I swear. Uh, downloading TikTok, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. Um, but then now I feel adventurous and now, now I'm getting like, oh, is, is this it? You know, when you're young and when you're a kid and people show you these cartoons of, you know, peer pressure, like, oh, peer pressure is going to be the reason why you get into drugs. So beware of peer pressure, you know. Is this it? JT and Potter and Pepper, they, they've tried weed and they would probably try again. They won't get addicted to it. But the thing is, I'm in LA now. I want to try out more. Now, let's get back to weed. I don't know if I want to hold myself to a high regard because of pride. Because, you know, I swear I'll never try weed. So I really do never try weed. But weed is an even milder drug than alcohol. You need to know that weed is a milder drug than alcohol. Uh, and I have definitely tried alcohol before, duh. And it's okay. Like my mom tells me to drink red wine. So weed should be okay. But then again, it's just this like, if everyone's trying, maybe I shouldn't try because I don't want to, you know, follow the trend. You know, I want to be an outsider. So I think the best way to go about this, honestly, if I really do want to step out of my comfort zone, if I really want to experience something, I will try weed if only I don't do it voluntarily. Meaning that it would be, I would have to be drugged. Someone would have to slip me weed without me knowing. One more thing. Um, I and Pepper and Potter talked about how we met um, one time in the Culver in Culver City, and JT was like, "Oh yeah, that's the time you had stomach ache or or headache. It was headache." And Pepper laughed, saying, "Oh man, that's so Enoch." And that's true. That's so me. Like I have stomach aches and headaches and I'm always like, Ugh, I'm always secretly suffering for no reason. Like something bad always happens to me for no reason. But I didn't know that Pepper would know me like that. Like oh, Pepper also kind of knows me well. I feel like I've shown enough of my sides to, to Pepper that she actually kind of knows who I am now. And I also know, know her. Like I can tell, oh, that's a very, that's a very Pepper thing, you know. I wish there's more to Pepper. I really wish deeply. And I think JT, uh, no, I, I think Potter completely understand me. Because when Potter asked Pepper, like, oh, how do you feel when you have these heart attacks? Like, like, what's your feeling? Did it change your personality? I feel like Potter's doing exactly what I was doing for so long. And that is, he's trying to fish something interesting out of Pepper. Because Pepper can't be this shallow, right? And I feel like there are small bits and pieces of pepper that's like, oh, there's a bit of darkness in that. But just it's so small, it doesn't like maybe go, ooh, it's not like Mary, you know, Mary, like Mary does some things and it's like, whoa, whoa, that's so not like her. Um, But pepper hasn't gotten that yet. And I think partially it's because I don't hear much about pepper. Like people don't. Tell me rumors. Oh, Pepper's doing this, Pepper's doing that. So everything I know about Pepper is from Pepper herself. So that's the opposite of the way I perceive Mary. Like 90% of my perception of Mary is basically rumors. Like people telling me what Mary had done, you know. And it's so confusing and strange and paradoxical. And she's like a mythical creature. Pepper's almost the opposite of that. So I want to hear rumors about her and I wish there's like a dark side to Pepper. Like I really wish Pepper's like, I don't know, secretly insane. Or, or maybe she doesn't even know it herself, which is less cool, you know. It would be cooler if she like knows it, you know. It, it just adds another layer of evilness to her, which is really like nice, you know. So I, I, I wish something like that. <laughs> I don't know.